Let's use SPI to control a chip, specifically a DAC, which is a digital to analog converter. Almost every microcontroller has an ADC, an analog to digital converter, so that it could read an analog voltage, um, but very few have a digital to analog converter that can produce an analog voltage. So we can buy a chip that uh, does that for us. This is specifically the MC. P4912. Uh, and this is a device that uses SPI as input uh, to be told what to output on uh, its two channels. So it has a, a two channel output. So it can produce two different voltages. Um, and it's 12 bit resolution. So we have uh, 40, 96 different voltages that we can produce. Um, between either 0 and 3.3 volts uh, up to a different voltage that we could provide. In this case, we'll use 3.3 volts. Um, so once you tell this chip what voltage to produce, it will sit, stay at that level forever. So we'll sit in a loop and we will continuously tell it, update your voltage, update your voltage. And in that way, we can generate any kind of waveform that we want, like a sine wave or a triangle wave. So that's what we'll do with this chip. Let's take a look at the data sheet comes in three different flavors, um, an 8-bit, a 10-bit, and a 12-bit version. It's rail-to-rail -rail output. Uh, so when we ask for zero volts output, it gives us an actual zero volts output. And when we tell it the maximum output, it does that as well. Sometimes these chips can't do that. It uses SPI as its input up to 20 megahertz. That's nice. Um, Oftentimes, uh, you have to think about why are you generating this analog voltage? Are you using it to make sound? Uh, are you using it as an input to, say, a motor driver or something? So you want to know how, f from when you tell it to output a specific voltage, how long before it settles at that voltage. So this is a good, like, general purpose uh, digital to analog converter. Here's the pinout. So on the left side of the chip, uh, we have got our power input. NC means no connect. Then we've got our chip select pin. The bar on top of the chip select here is to remind us that chip select is normally high, and when it goes low, that's when this chip is paying attention to us. It's got a clock input, and it's data in that comes from our data out. It has no data out pin, it can't talk back. So the reason why I like using this chip first is that when we talk to it, uh, we'll tell it to output a new voltage, and if it does, we know that our communication was successful. We're not trying to rely on both our writing to and reading from code to work at the same time. It's hard to debug. So first we'll talk to this chip and it will output a voltage, we'll know if it works. On the right side of the chip, uh, we've got the V out A and V out B pins. So those are the pins where our voltage is generated from. VSS is ground. And then V ref A and V ref B, that will be the maximum voltage that could be produced at those output pins. So we will attach 3.3 uh, volts to VDD and the ref pins and ground to this ground pin. We will observe V out A and V out B. NCs don't go anywhere. And then we'd figure out what is this shutdown pin and this LDAC pin? What are those doing functionally? So here's a little bit of an internal to this chip. And we can see that the um, output is being made uh, by changing um, some kind of uh, uh, voltage that goes into a buffer op amp. And that buffer op amp could have some kind of gain to it. Uh, usually these uh, registers, these are made by turning resistors on and off to generate our voltage. Uh, the, this chip can go from uh, 2.7 to 5 volts, so we could use 3.3 volts as our logic and 5 volts as the voltage that we're generating. So we could generate voltages between 0 and 5. In this case, I'm choosing to just use 3.3. So all these DAC chips will have lots and lots of specs about how accurate they are and timing and things like that. So as you scroll through uh, a data sheet like this, expect lots and lots of graphs. And in this case, I'm not really using this chip to do anything, so we don't really care. And I'll find better pin descriptions further down. We see the LDAC is uh, the pin that's used to transfer the DAC settings, the thing that we're telling it to do, to actually make it. And then the shutdown. Uh, pin will make the pin make the chip use less power so that if we're on battery and we're not using that chip at the moment we can shut it down 
So here's uh, more information on LDAC, and it says, when this pin is low, both V out A and V out B are updated at the same time. Uh, this pin can be tied to low if the update is desired on the rising edge of CS. So that sounds good. So let's hook LDAC to ground. And then the shutdown pin, when this pin is low, both channels are shut down. We don't want that. So we should hook shutdown to 3.3 volts. So LDAC will be low and shutdown will be high. I think that's about all we need to know from the data sheet. Uh, as far as building, sometimes further down they will talk about adding capacitors between the power supply. So if you are using this for a sensitive instrument and you need a nice clean voltage coming out, um, there's probably recommendations further down on capacitors to use. Now the hard part about this chip is what do we send to it? What data over SPI do we tell it to make a voltage? So uh, right now we're talking about the general overview in this sheet and it says um, We've got V out is equal to V ref times uh, data that we're telling it, divide by 2 to the N uh, times G. So the N is the version of the chip that we have. And we have the 12 um, bit version, or you might have the 10 or the A, just pay attention to that. Uh, v ref is 3.3 volts. So when you send the number 0, you get 0 out. When you send the largest number you have, then uh, you get V ref out, and then it's linear in between. But there's a G factor in here, so that means that we can set some bit called the gain bit and get a multiplied by 2. Now, I don't really know why we would need to do that, so we're going to always set our GA bit to 1. What else do we want to know here? We'll keep going down. Eventually, we have to figure out uh, what bits and in, in what order do we send them. So we'll keep going through the data sheet. And I'm looking for some kind of timing chart um, or graph. Here it is. So for the three different versions of this chip, for the 12-bit version, uh, it looks like we're always going to send 16 bits. So from bit 15 down to bit 0, that's 16 bits. So we'll do two 8-bit writes. And the first 8-bit number is going to contain um, A or B. So the, the leftmost bit says, are you trying to update uh, the V out A or V out B? And the next bit says, do you want a buffered output? That sounds good. Uh, what should uh, GA be? Should it be multiplying by 2? Do we want to do a software shutdown? So um, we have a hardware shutdown with a pin. We also have a software shutdown bit. And then the remaining uh, 12 bits represent the voltage that we would like, split up across two different writes. So there'll be some interesting uh, bitwise manipulations we have to do here. Uh, once we have our 12-bit number that we want to output to put it across two different bytes. And if you have a different uh, bit version of this chip, it just means that the lower end bits aren't used. So specifically, uh, write a 1 to the first bit uh, if you want to be outputting to channel B or 0 for A, a 1 to be buffered, a 1 for a gain of 1, um, a 1 to be in active mode. So let's draw this out. We need to write 16 bits. So I'll have uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So this is the first byte that we need to write, and this is the second byte we need to write. And this is A or uh, B. And then we want to make sure that we are uh, buffering and have a gain of 1, and we are not shut down. So those three bits will always be 1. And then these bits over to these bits represent our 12-bit voltage that we would like. So that 12-bit voltage, that's really um, some kind of like unsigned short. V. And I'll set that equal to, you know, some number that I want, the voltage that I want. Um, so that's a number between 0 and 4096. Um, then that number, uh, a short, is two bytes. So I'm going to take um, uh, my, uh, maybe I also have an unsigned char channel, and that's a zero one. one. So channel is what's going to go here. And then I'm going to make uh, an unsigned uh, uh, printed value that's a short P. So uh, P 
is going to be equal to, I need my channel bit all the way left. So I'll shift it this many zeros, uh, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. I need 15 zeros behind it. So I'll shift C by 15. So now I've got, if this is a 1 or a 0 that represents which channel I'm trying to write to, that's all the way over there. And then I can uh, make P equal to P, and I can OR it with, in binary, 0, B, 1, 1, 1. That represents, represents these guys. And I can shift those by the number of zeros behind them, uh, 12. And then I can OR my, va my voltage value V into P. So I'm trying to assemble this value P uh, so that now I can take the first uh, 8 bits of P and use SPIO to send them out, and then the next 8 bits of P uh, and send them out. So SPIO needs to be called twice, so I will make uh, CS low, and then I need to do SPIO on the leftmost part of P. So if I take P, which is two sets of eight, and I shift it to the right by eight, um, I would be able to send the first high bits. So I would send P, and I need to shift it this way by eight. And then I could do it again, S, P, I, I, O. And this time, if I just send it P, it will automatically truncate the high bits for me. And then I make C, S, high. So that's my code order for uh, writing out this voltage P. So here's a good uh, test to run. Or actually, let's look at uh, the circuit that I've built. So uh, here is my basic PIC circuit being powered from 5 volts, 3.3 uh, volts from a regulator. And here is uh, my MCP49. Uh, this is uh, 22. So this is the 12 bit version. And I've got my power and my ground. I've got my three. Uh, data pins, the, the data, the clock, and the chip select going to the PIC. Uh, I've got my reference voltages. I've got uh, my LDAC and my shutdown. And then I'm reading the two outputs into the end scope. So let me open up the end scope software and show you um, a good test program to write. Try to output a sine wave and a triangle wave. So I've got um, the sine wave on channel 1 and a triangle wave on channel two. I've got them both going from zero to 3.3 volts, so I'm using the full 12-bit range. Um, I'm updating them 100 times a second. So 100 times a second, uh, so I've got a, 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 my function that writes this voltage and then that writes this voltage and then a delay of 100th of a second, and then I loop very fast. And I put these elements into an array. So I have an array that represents a sine wave, an array that represents a triangle wave, and I'm just looping through those elements um, 100 times a second. And of course, one thing to note is that um, that means if we zoomed in on this, we could see that these are very uh, stepwise because that's 100th of a second. So we're using that voltage and then that voltage and then that voltage. And so the, um, the triangle wave is really just slowly ramping up and then ramping back down. And then the sine wave uh, kind of is small steps when the slope is small and big steps when the slope is big. So if you did want a nice clean sine wave out of here, you could either update faster and have more steps, or you could take this voltage and run it through a filter so that it would be smoother.